hello, my name is Steph Diamond Bayer and I'm a teacher trainer, lecturer and director of the language unit at Anglia Ruskin University. Um, it's good to see so many of you here today and I hope you'll find the session useful. I'll be joined at the end of the webinar by Sarah Unsworth, Assessment Group Manager at Cambridge English Language Assessment to answer any questions you may have. So today we'll be considering the role of learning oriented assessment in the language classroom. We'll consider what is meant by learning oriented assessment and how this type of assessment differs from traditional forms of assessment in that its primary focus is to promote learning. So consequently it becomes an integral part of the whole learning process. In this webinar, we'll look at how this unique approach works in practice and how it empowers learners. So, we will be examining how the learning-oriented assessment cycle works. We will look at how it can provide a functional framework which helps teachers work systematically and effectively with their students to achieve successful learning outcomes. And we will see how this works day to day in the classroom. As we go through the cycle, we will use examples of classroom application from Empower, a series of course books uniquely designed to support learning-oriented assessment cycles in the classroom. At present, these books are available from A2 to B2 level. But before we take a close look at learning-oriented assessment, let's think about the challenges teachers and learners face in the classroom. Let's begin with the learners themselves. I'd like you to think about learning from their perspective. Use the chat box and write down some of the things your learners say they want and need in order to improve their English. OK, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to type away. Okay, lots of people mentioning practice, time has come up, speaking practice, more speaking practice, um, more listening, writing practice is coming up, autonomy has come up, yes, autonomy again, how to assess themselves and their friends, colloquial language, practice of the four skills, evaluation, feedback. Okay, so um, lots of really fantastic ideas, they're all really interesting and we'll, we'll pick up on those now. Um, so, as we can see from this comment from a participant on a general English language course in Cambridge, I want to speak like real people. I mean real language, not classroom language. Quite a few of you mentioned speaking there. Um, one, a, a, an ongoing issue for learners is the desire to be able to understand and use natural language, the kind that they hear in real life situations. They want to be able to achieve realistic communication and not a sort of sanitised, cleaned up version with neatly packaged grammar and vocabulary. They know, especially nowadays where they have exposure to websites, films and media using English as lingua franca, that a certain type of language works well in the classroom but doesn't always prepare them for the messy real life language they're hoping to acquire. Another is the issue of confidence, particularly with output. In other words, speaking and writing. Effective factors, confidence, motivation, feeling calm and relaxed can impact on the rate of language acquisition and make a significant difference to a learner's success. And many learners feel very anxious about certain skills. Speaking is not often an area which can make learners particularly nervous. Learners uh, also have issues with assessment. They have a love-hate relationship with exams. Love because they often want to know what they're doing in measurable terms. 
They also want to be able to understand their own specific strengths and weaknesses. And an awareness of these can certainly help learners to improve their English. But hate because exams are challenging. And sometimes students feel they would be better focused on learning rather than testing. However, at the same time, they also want the teacher to be able to give them clear information about their performance. Often in relation to external measures, for example, they ask how they might do in a Cambridge, first, uh, Cambridge English First Certificate exam or in an IELTS exam. Finally, learners can have difficulty with study skills and autonomous learning. Even highly motivated learners can struggle to understand what to do outside the classroom when not being directed by the teacher. And teachers don't always have the opportunity, opportunity to design personalised learning for every learner. Learner autonomy is an important issue, but learners and teachers too often struggle to achieve this. The choice of material can help to address some of these issues. As you can see from the extract above, the Empower course incorporates useful real-world language opportunities to improve conversation and speaking skills, and also progress tests. Um, we'll look at this material and these tests in more detail later in the webinar. And of course, if learners have particular issues or needs, so do teachers. In our day-to-day -day teaching, there are many challenges to choose from. Um, but let's pick out a couple which relate to some of the learner needs and issues that we've selected and see if they sound familiar to you. We've examined how learners would like to do more speaking, engage in more natural communication and take part in more interactive activities. We've also looked at their need for lots of personal feedback and advice on learning from their teachers. So why doesn't this always happen? Think about your own teaching situation. Um, look at these three issues that can be problematic for teachers. First, limited facilities for communication focus and multimedia activities, for example, voice recording, video or mobile learning. Also, lack of time to prepare and deliver activities and keep detailed records for students. And finally, large numbers of learners to provide with feedback and suggestions for personalised work. Use your wand tool to select which of these is the most significant challenge you face in your teaching. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. More than one may be applicable, but choose the one that you find most significantly challenging. Okay, if you could use your wand tools now. Try and use your wands. Um, we've got lots of people typing into the, t into the text box, but you can use your wands and put your, your sons onto the map. Okay, two uh, and three are coming up a lot. Quite a few ones as well. Most of you wanting to select more than one of those problems. Yeah, again, lots more ones, twos and threes. Okay, there's a lovely smiley face there. All right, so it looks like um, lack of time and large numbers is the thing that you find most significantly challenging, although people have also selected limited f facilities as well. So um, what can we do that will help us to meet these challenges and provide our learners with what they need? This is where Learning Oriented Assessment, which I'll refer to as LOA, comes in. Let's look at how this can help. The key point about LOA is that the underlying ideas and procedures are not alien or new. They're familiar to teachers and reflect what most of us are trying to do in the classroom every day. 
As teachers, we are aware of the need to have specific learning outcomes. This is so that learners, as well as teachers, are clear about what they are trying to achieve. As we know, the next step is to then identify suitable tasks and to use them effectively in the classroom in a way that will help learners to achieve these outcomes. These tasks and activities could obviously be from a course book, materials you've devised yourself or from elsewhere. As our learners do these tasks, we can monitor their performance so we can assess how our learners are doing and check on the progress they're making. And we know it's also important to encourage learners to think about their own progress too. And as teachers, we are aware of the need to provide feedback to our learners so that they have a clearer understanding of their own strengths and weaknesses and are then able to make decisions alongside the teacher about how they can continue to make progress and further improve their English. Finally, teachers are also aware of the need to adjust future learning outcomes and also lesson content in response to evidence of learner progress. A teacher might, for example, decide to create some personalised practice for learners to address the specific needs that they've identified when monitoring a controlled practice task or a speaking activity in class. So, as teachers, these are our aims. And these are also the key features of learning-oriented assessment. They are essentially the elements that make up an LOA cycle. Let's look at how it works. We start by specifying our objectives against the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, or the CEFR, as I will now refer to it. Let's say you're teaching a class who's working towards A2 level. So you'll use the A2 level descriptors and an analysis of individual students' needs to draw up your learning objectives for your course or syllabus. The course or syllabus is then delivered in the classroom. The learners carry out the task in class while the teacher monitors the activity and observes how the learners perform. Progress is assessed and this might be by the teacher, self-assessment or peer-to-peer -peer assessment. As the teacher monitors, he or she makes an informal mental record or a quick note about the student's task performance and their achievements in the lesson. Based on these observations and informal records of student performance, the teacher gives feedback on a learner's performance and their progress. But it could also mean modifying the immediate learning objectives to optimise learning outcomes for this task. The teacher then uses these classroom observations and informal records to inform the next task and so the familiar pedagogical cycle continues. As well as this informal record during the activity, after the lesson the teacher may also keep a more structured record with information about the content and activities covered in class, the progress the students have made and the difficulties they may have encountered and measure this against the CEFR and the learning objectives. So teachers are aware of all these factors but they are also under time pressure. They have to follow specific syllabus requirements, they have large classes and so on which makes all of this more challenging. Let's see what you feel about it. Using your voting button, I'd like you to say if you feel able to cover all these elements consistently all the time. So please choose yes or no now using your voting bat buttons. I'll give you a moment to do that. If you can use your buttons, lots of people typing in, mostly saying no, no, impossible, not all the time. Some people are saying at times we can. 
lots of no's. Okay, we've had seven yeses and a much larger percentage are saying it's not possible. And then we've had some people typing in, and the majority of the people typing are saying it needs dedication, not consistently, not all the time. So the reality of following all of the stages of LOA, of you, as you've all just said pretty much, um, can be constrained often by a lack of structure in the way learning is delivered or by materials that don't really support the LOA cycle. But let's look at how we can apply the different stages of the cycle using materials from Empower and how these materials and the approach in this course book series can help address these issues day to day. We'll see how Empower can help us to achieve all of our aims as teachers by enabling us to support learners systematically, provide detailed records or feedback, develop personalised learning and link this to clear scales of performance. Let's think about how we can apply the materials in power to the LOA sequence on a day-to-day -day basis. Clearly one key element of any learning is that the learners must be engaged and this is not forgotten in LOA. So, the opening page of Empower has striking images to engage the learners. It picks up some key elements of LOA by identifying clear learning objectives and setting tasks that encourage a personal response to topics and natural language production, things that learners ask for and want to develop. The units also contain video material that's unusually naturalistic in the way language is presented. Again, something learners want, but something which is unique in course book materials, which are structured and graded for classroom teaching. Um, these are things that learners ask for and want to develop, as we've seen from the earlier quotes. Language and vocabulary is included in the book with a mix of skills work. And one reason why both teachers and learners can feel confident about the level they're achieving is because the vocabulary is informed by English vocabulary profile and the Cambridge English corpus, making sure that it's the most useful language for their stage of learning. The content is benchmarked to the CEFR. It's clear that benchmarking and linking classroom activity and informal assessment to more formal external scales is important for both teachers and learners. Now let's take a look at a page of material on the screen now. Um, have a look at the vocabulary and the headings and suggest the level it may be aimed at. Is it A2, B1 or B1 plus? or B2. Um, if you can't see all of the detail, have a look particularly at the headings, try and pick out some vocabulary and then type into your text box the level that you think it might be. So we've got A2, quite a few A2s, B1s, B1+, plus, more A2s. Okay, I'm just having a look for a few more ideas. Have a quick look over the headings, look at the grammar that's being taught there. See what you come up with. Okay, any more ideas? Okay, so the majority of people have said A2, looking at the answers that have come through to me. And I think that's right, it is from A2. So we know the material can be linked easily to the external scales and measures um, identifying how well learners are doing. And evidently, as learners work through these materials, the LOA cycle emphasises the need for ongoing assessment of performance and progress. The aims of this are to check both teacher and learner awareness of where they are in relation to the learning outcomes, to keep evidence of learning and to use this to adjust learning outcomes and future study. The assessment of progress can be carried out by the teacher or the learners themselves. 
So what ideas do you have for how you assess your learners apart from observation of tasks? Um, perhaps you could type your ideas in the chat box now. So again, I'll give you a few moments. Type in your ideas. How do you make judgments about your learners' progress um, as you watch them do tasks or within the classroom? Okay, so we've got some ideas coming in now. Um, so we've got oral questions, tests, the ability to recall vocabulary, testing coming up a lot, quizzes, projects is suggested, tests again, the ability to hold conversations more fluently. So I presume that that would be through um, observing them doing interactive tasks. From answers and questions, that's very interesting. Looking at what the students actually ask in response to the learning is a good way of seeing how far they're getting ahead. Role play, confidence um, is coming up as well. Participation. Um, through p feedback, through performance. So lots of people are talking about monitoring and performance. I guess that falls into the observation category. Tests has been very popular, um, whether it's oral tests or otherwise, and, and project work is a nice one as well. Um, so um, teacher assessment can include things like taking notes on performance during activities and then writing them up or using them to give feedback to the learners directly after the activity. Uh, it could be completing individual report grids according to the performance on tasks. Marking written work, giving immediate feedback, for example, correcting pronunciation, or even recording learners and, if you have the facility, sending them a spoken report on audio file. These records can help the teacher decide how the learner is doing, what they need next, and it also gives them a record of their performance. And then learners can also assess themselves or their peers. For example, by using a checklist the teacher provides. So which other methods have you used um, to assess and support learning with your learners and help the, helping them to assess themselves or each other? Again, put your ideas into the text box. How do you help your learners assess themselves? I'll give you a few moments. OK, so people are suggesting portfolios, using interviews, um, using role plays, asking them to give a presentation. OK, I think those are all great ideas. Um, how, how do you actually get them to assess each other doing the role plays? Um, how do you encourage them? Somebody suggested peer assessment and self-correction. How do you encourage this? What do you do to get them to do those things? Somebody else has suggested giving them a grid that they share and they use their self-evaluation through use, ticking a grid, I guess, or writing comments in the grid. Um, Feedback from pe from peers, again great, perhaps you mean by allowing them to just speak to each other about what they think of each other's performance. Somebody else has suggested reporting on what their partner has said or written. Um, some nice ideas about sharing written work um, with peers and getting them to comment on each other's written work. So lots and lots of lovely ideas coming through there. It's good to see that people are starting to integrate more peer and self-assessment into classroom activity. Um, here are some of our ideas. So learners can assess themselves using checklists given to them by the teacher, as I've said. Um, they could use can-do statements to identify what they can do well, what they feel they need to work on more. 
They could complete diaries to encourage self-awareness, use answer keys to correct work, peer checking and reflection after writing or speaking activities, as you've suggested, and so on. Encouraging learners to assess themselves and each other in this way is very beneficial in promoting learner autonomy and independent development. As mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, the key point about LOA and what makes it different from more traditional approaches to assessment is that its main aim is to promote learning. But maintaining detailed records is demanding and once feedback has been given, it's even more challenging to suggest individual learning pathways for students in response to their performance. Most teachers don't even have time to go over test scores in detail with students. So let's see how Empower could help in easing the strain of assessing and providing feedback and adjustment to learning materials after assessment. One way is that each unit contains a progress test which students complete at the end of the unit, developed by assessment experts and benchmarked to CEFR levels to ensure reliability and validity. This test covers grammar, vocabulary and functional language. And learners can do the tests online, which means they can do them individually in their own time, which helps to give them some sense of control. Some teachers may want to do the tests in an invigilated way, while other teachers may set a test and feedback cycle for homework. Students get a score for each area of language covered in the test and the score is broken down so they can see their score for grammar, for vocabulary and for the functional language covered in the unit. Students are directed to appropriate activities depending on their score in the test. If students have not grasped the language point at all, they will be directed to a representation of the language. If they have understood a little, they will be dropped in at practice one. If they've understood a reasonable amount, they'll be dropped in at practice two. A learner who scores very highly in the test would be directed to some extension activities to further develop their language and skills. In this way, learners are directed to personalised work, which is specifically targeted to what they need. All these resources are ready and waiting for them as part of the Empower package, which again eases the workload of the teacher whilst personalising the learning of the student. So individual learners, whatever point they're at in their learning, are being supported or challenged as appropriate. After completing the extra practice activities, learners can retake parts of the test where their scores were low the first time. This time they only retake questions they got wrong the first time. Then learners can look at their learner profile online to compare their original result with the one from their second attempt at the progress test. For teachers, there is also a grade book which presents the scores of all the learners in their class this enables teachers to assign and track tasks easily because they can see how the whole class is doing as well as how individual learners are getting on. It also allows the teacher to maintain accurate records and ensure that their learners are doing appropriate additional practice in a time efficient and a manageable way. Let's think a little more closely about why regular monitoring and reviewing of progress can be helpful for both teachers and students. Think about what we've seen so far and your own experiences of progress reviews. 
and write your ideas into the box now. So I'll give you a few minutes just to do that. So what um, do you think we achieve by regular progress um, assessments? Okay, so please type into the text box. Somebody suggested it's good for confidence building and lack of stagnation. I think they're really excellent ideas. It's a great way to monitor progress, gives students a sense of achievement which motivates them. Yep, they can see where they're strong, so they leave those things aside. Feeling of accomplishment. It's a good way to recycle knowledge. Um, somebody suggested you can evaluate whether they're hitting their intended learning outcomes. Um, they can work on what they need to work on. Nice idea there about it gives the learners a sense that they'll want to take more responsibility and achieve more for themselves. Realistic feedback motivates learners because they can see where they really stand. Okay, gives, gives students a sense of direction. Allows teachers to identify areas that need to be re-looked at. Identifying strengths and weaknesses of learners. Scaffolding their progression, building their progression. Um, yep, a, a more personalised approach firm ideas so it's a real sort of clarity on the approach and it's personalised. Um, lots of really interesting ideas there and as we've seen being aware of how students progress allows the teacher to adjust classroom content and ensure they receive the input they need. It also allows students to take more responsibility as, as some of you said for their own learning to notice areas they find more challenging and to think about focusing more on doing additional practice for those areas. It can also be motivating when they have a visible record of their progress. In practical terms, such reviews mean that the teacher has a ready source of evidence when it's time to write an interim report for the student or, for example, a parent. It can also help if classes are being rearranged and students need to be restreamed or placed into new level groups. For the learner, the system also provides a clear record of their progress for each unit. And as you can see, the progress test is not the only type of test involved in LOA. Of course, one area that's difficult to address in tests is speaking. So at the end of each unit, there is also a speaking progress test focusing on the pronunciation and speaking practice that appears in the unit. This test allows the learners to record and listen to themselves as many times as they want within a time limit. Through the use of voice recognition software, the system is able to identify how well the learner is pronouncing particular words or phrases and to give them an immediate score for pronunciation and fluency. Here's an example of a word stress task. The student has to listen and then record themselves saying the word with the correct stress. And as well as progress tests, which are part of the cycle of learning that takes place in the unit, the student also has an opportunity to take competency tests in the four skills at the mid course and end of course point. The results of these are benchmarked to the CEFR um, and so this allows the teacher and learner to consider performance in CEFR terms and to consider which in Cambridge English exam the learners might be able to start preparing for. In this way the course takes a learning oriented approach and combines two different types of assessment. Formative assessment by means of the progress tests and informal monitoring where the teacher can use the results and what they find out about their learners to modify and adapt lessons and summative assessment by means of mid-course and end-of-course competency tests which gives teachers and learners an overall picture 
of performance. This combination of formative and summative assessment is a very important aspect of LOA and the Empower course materials allow the teacher to do this in a systematic and efficient way. Here is an example from the end of course competency listening test. Have a quick look now. This is the report the students get at the end of the course. This student has achieved an A2 level and therefore has received the recommendation that they're now ready to prepare for the Cambridge English Key. In this way, the student, uh, sorry, the course is linked to and directs students to other Cambridge English exams. And as we have seen, many students appreciate this kind of clear benchmarking. So, to summarise, learning oriented assessment provides a clear framework and structure for teaching and learning with an emphasis on meeting learning outcomes and engaging the learner in their own learning and development. This, together with the material from Empower, not only addresses several of the learner needs that were highlighted at the beginning of the webinar, but also allows teachers to meet the challenges of assessing learners effectively, keeping records, providing personalised feedback, and using evidence of progress to adjust future learning outcomes. In other words, it helps teachers to do what they set out to do. So, hopefully, you have a clearer idea now about what an LOA cycle is, how it can support teachers and learners in a principled and systematic approach to learning, and how you can apply it practically using Empower to support the process. Let's now answer your questions. Um, so we're going to run through some of the questions that were sent in by some of you um, before the seminar and, and during your um, time now. So, um, Sarah, maybe you could start with the first questions, which are about some of the content and the suitability of Empower. Sure, yes. As um, Steph mentioned earlier, um, I'm Sarah Unsworth and I'm one of the assessment group managers at Cambridge English Language Assessment. Um, so just to take those um, questions about um, how um, test-oriented Empower is, which a few of you have been asking, um, there are um, lots of tests, progress tests um, and competency tests within Empower, as you've heard from Steph. Um, but these tests and the idea of them is very much that they are integrated within the, the learning. So it's about the integration of, of learning and assessment. Um, and in terms of the age group that Empower is suitable for, it's 16 plus learners. So we're looking at adult learners and there are six levels av available. And one of the levels, B1, is broken down into B1 and B1 plus. Thank you. Um, a lot of you are asking about um, ways of assessing. So a few people have mentioned that they don't necessarily have the IT facilities to use the online packages where all of the personalised pathways and so on are available. Um, just quickly on a practical note, can you access that without internet um, readily available, Sarah? Um, you can't access all of the pathways if you haven't got access to the internet, so the student does need to have internet access in order to do the tests online and in order to do the um, practice activities that follow on from that. So they could do that at home, I guess. But they could do that at home. Um, yes, um, if they don't have internet access at home, which was a question I think that somebody else has asked as well. Mm. Obviously, if they don't have um, um, access at home, they can either do them in the classroom, if they have access in the classroom, or if they don't um, have any internet access at all, then there is um, the option to print out paper-based versions of the test and the teacher can do this by downloading them. Great. Um, and, I mean, I think the, the other question that people are asking about is the, is the feasibility of, of doing assessments. So some people are asking about, is a can-do list really useful? 
um, if I don't have lots of um, IT facilities, can I do my own formative assessment effectively? Um, yes, I think can-do lists are important and useful. Um, I think they're important in the sense that they focus your students on learning outcomes and they focus you on learning outcomes. Um, it's very easy to get diverted and I think, you know, it's really key that we're aware of what we're trying to achieve at each stage of teaching. So um, at the very least, I think it helps students to understand what, what the aims are. And I think we often underestimate our students in terms of their ability to self-assess. Some students, I mean, someone's mentioned here about whether they um, tend to be overconfident or overestimate their skills. Um, and others feel that students um, underestimate their skills, but I don't think that's the point. The point is to get them to start thinking about their learning. Um, they're not teachers. We don't expect them to accurately benchmark everything. The material does that for them and for you as teachers. The process of getting them to think about their learning makes them more independent learners. It keeps them focused on the outcome. And they often come up with incredibly interesting points, I think, and useful developments. That's right, yes. So, I mean, the, the whole of this kind of approach is based on encouraging that and not being afraid of it. That's right. It's very much learner autonomy is a very important part of the course, I think. That's right. Indeed. Um, so, um, somebody else has mentioned um, about lack of progress being demoralising. Um, I mean, I think the tests are not demoralising because they repeat them, don't they? Yeah, that's right. In fact, um, they um, do the test and then um, do lots of practice on the specific areas that they've um, had problems with or um, that they need to concentrate on more. And then they have the opportunity to retake those questions again. So in this way, I think it is motivating for students because they will see their scores improving as they take that test the second time and as they go through the course as well. And you showed, Steph, the, the learner profile mm. um, and, you know, you could see there clearly, you know, how students um, can observe how they've made progress as they go through. Yeah, I mean, I think the lack of progress um, that, that people have asked about at higher levels, I think that traditionally that is an area where students sometimes stall because they feel they're not getting much further ahead. It's just that the progression is often less visible to them. Um, so I think this kind of approach where it's much more structured, much more formalised, provides a lot more information so they can see the steps that they're taking more visibly. Um, and the online materials really make it visual. So I think, it, I, for me, it isn't particularly problematic. That's right. There's been a few questions come in about the availability of the books as well, and I think Pippa touched on this earlier, actually, um, that the books are available from Cambridge University Press and are available at booksellers internationally. At the moment, we only have A2 to B2 levels out, um, with um, the other levels uh, coming out next year. Um, somebody's asked if it's available for iPad and tablets. Um, yes, um, it um, is available for iPads and um, tablets. Um, we're actually working at the moment on making the task types e even more compatible so that they will work even better on tablets. So that's a piece of work that's going on currently. Um, I think someone else has also asked whether students can only see the, their own results or whether they can see the results of other students. Um, so the teacher can see the results of everybody, they can see class results, students would see their own results, um, so they don't necessarily have to share all of their results, um, they can just see their own. I see a question too about CET um, students and about um, if they're age 13 and as I, I mentioned earlier, we're recommending 16 plus as the target level. So I think if students are younger than 14, then we wouldn't advise this as the right course for them. OK, so um, that in mind, um, people are asking about the, the feasibility of um, including all these things in a cycle. Um, it does seem quite overwhelming, I think, to many teachers when they look at it, they, especially if they have things that we talked about, large classes um, and, you know, lots of kind of limit, limitations on time, on facilities and so on. That said, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, a lot of these things are things that teachers are doing. I think that we just don't vocalise it very much. What we don't do is consider all of those steps in our classroom practice. 
which means that what happens is people tend to do it in a very intermittent way. Um, I don't think it's that teachers aren't able to do it, it's just that it's not very structured. So I think the whole point of LOA is to bring some structure to that. And actually it seems really overwhelming to start with, but once you do have a sort of structure or an aim in the way that you're going to work, it makes it much more accessible. Um, and in fact, you, you start to feel less overwhelmed by the amount that you have to do. Um, I don't think what we're saying that you can do a perfect assessment job for every single student every day of the week. You know, a classroom is, um, is, is, a, is a busy place and there's lots of calls on time. But I think something like this kind of framework does really, really support learners. That's right. And um, can and actually, teachers. that's right, make the teacher's job easier as well. Um, somebody's asked about standardisation um, here as well, Sarah, and we, d we did talk about that, but maybe you could just talk about the benchmarking quickly again. Yeah, sure, that's right. I think this question was probably about, um, you know, how you can be sure that there is standardisation of, of marking across the tests. Well, obviously, with the online progress test, the tests are marked and the student gets their score online. Um, but the only test that is actually teacher marked um, is the speaking competency test. And so um, here the teacher will give a score and will input that score. But what we've done is we've provided some um, resources and some standardisation videos to help teachers so that they are able to do this more effectively. And so teachers teaching the course will have resources available to them to go and look at and to help them to standardise. OK. Um, and then one, one other question. Um, somebody has said without the IT, learning oriented assessment will be less accurate and informative, but more formative and personalised. I mean, I think that that is inevitable, yes. Um, that it's if you're if you're not doing lots of online tests, you're not going to get the kind of statistical data that you would from sort of summative style testing. Um, however, I think if you work more systematically on your assessment, if your formative assessment is put into a framework, if you're doing it more regularly with things like can-do lists, that you're actually still going to achieve a much more rounded picture of students' progress. And more importantly, they'll have a sense of that too. So I think don't be afraid of giving it a go. Um, don't think just because I can't do it perfectly every day, I shouldn't try at all. I think give it a go and see, yes. see what you can come That's up right. with. Um, and I think we're probably running out of time now for questions. So um, thank you for attending the webinar. I hope you found it useful. The next webinar coming up is Developing Functional Language Skills for Cambridge English Key for Schools on June the 15th and the 17th. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you very much.